But if I may, there's something that concerns me far more than that. In the euphoria, the delight of seeing all these cruise missiles taking off and the dramatic footage and the targeting footage, I think all the analysts and all of us have been missing one really big thing. These strikes last night were designed to limit terrorist casualties. These were not serious manful strikes. And I'll give you the evidence. Why did we go in at night? There was no air defense threat. Could have done it in broad daylight. If you wanted to kill terrorists, you would have hit those headquarters and compounds and logistics sites at 10 or 11 in the morning when they were crowded with leaders, staff officers, flunkies, etc. Instead, we hit empty buildings at night. If we knocked down antennas, we blew out windows. That is not the way to defeat terrorists who behead Americans. We should have gone in in the morning, gone in heavy, and kill. Let me give you the measure of success in airstrikes against ISIS. It is not knocking out windows. It is acres and acres of dead terrorists. Colonel, that is tactical success. If the, if the president is using this as part of a comprehensive strategy to literally... He's not. To de, well, that's my point. To defeat ISIS... I'm on board. But if it is as I suspect that he's doing this to check the box and he only has to do it for political reasons and he needs to, to show that he's willing to fight them at least a little bit and he won't listen to his military advisors and commanders, then, then I've got to ask, you know, does this make any sense at all to do it half-assed? That's what I'm concerned about. Well, I'm glad when this president does anything to stop terror. But... He he wants to, to wage war by measuring it out in teaspoons. And the, the cardinal advantage of a superpower, for God's sake, is superpower. If you're going to go to war, you go to war to win. Small war, big war, doesn't matter. But this, all this, you know, modulated responses and graduated buildups, no. If the United States goes to war, we should fight. And I'm sick of hearing pundits in Washington who never served in uniform saying, oh, victory is impossible in the 21st century. Victory is always possible if you're willing to pay the price, if you're willing to be ruthless and ferocious and do what's right for our security and win. If, if we believe, Colonel, that they are evil, and they are, and they have the landmass, and they do, and they have the money, and they do, and they have the radical ideology which they follow, then we're either going to have to fight them now or later. And later they'll be much stronger. I think that is a great yeah. admonition that if you're going to fight, there's got to be victory. I think Sean, Winston, that's, Winston that's Churchill said the same yeah. thing. Yeah, well, it, it, it's, just a, it's a no brainer. I mean, yeah. you don't have an army to mark time you know, in formation. But my, my God, it's, it's, it's just stunning to me that we do face truly evil opponents. We're going to have to fight for a long time. And the president wants to nickel and dime. Says, Fine. We're going to train 5,000 members of the Free Syrian Army. And they're going to be ready in, in 10 months or a year, we hope. Meanwhile, ISIL, or Islamic State, may have 80 or 100,000 members. They are, they are continuing wow. to attract recruits like wildfire. And by the way, another thing we got to get over, this nonsense about there can't be any civilian casualties. War is ugly, sloppy, and messy, and sometimes there are civilian casualties, especially when your enemy uses human shields. If you're going to go after ISIS, you got to suck it up and do what's right. And by the way, civilian casualties, look what ISIS is doing. And it's actually gaining them recruits as they slaughter civilians. All right, Colonel Peters, well said. Thank you. And critics are also Fox News strategic analysts. How are you, Colonel? Good morning to you. Uh, you've got Always over good all this. Talking to you. The, the, the BDAs, they call it the bomb damage assessment. You've got a lot of hardcore feelings about this. You think the time of day for these strikes is significant. Why? Well, it really, really mattered. And I think the media were so enraptured with the dramatic footage of the cruise missile launches and the before and after photos that they missed the fundamental point that Obama had restrictions on this air operation to minimize not just civilian, but to minimize terrorist casualties. He didn't want bloodshed. So we attacked in the middle of the night. Now, the only reason you'd attack in the middle of the night is if there's a, a forbidding air defense complex and you're worried about it. There were no air defenses in the areas we attacked. The Syrians certainly weren't going to turn on anything they had. ISIS doesn't have them. You could have gone in there safely in a hang glider. But instead, we went in the middle of the night. Why? M maybe, because uh, okay. the buildings were empty. All right, that could be. And maybe I'll give you another answer for your question why. Maybe there's cooperation with Damascus. I mean, you have a quote now from a Syrian government minister who says what's happened so far is proceeding in the right direction. He, he went on to say 
in terms of informing the Syrian government by not targeting Syrian military installations and not targeting civilians. Maybe there's cooperation here. And that was the only time of the day where Damascus said, it's okay. No, absolutely wrong. Sorry, Bill. Damascus has no say in this. They don't get a say. They don't get a vote. We let them know we were coming so they'd be smart and not turn their raiders on, and they didn't. Now, we went in the middle of the night because that way the buildings were empty and President Obama didn't ha want to hurt any terrorists. In the middle of the night, you blow out windows, you knock down antennas. The right time to hit, if you wanted to hurt the Islamic State terrorists, militants, would have been 10 or 11 in the morning when those headquarters buildings, logistics sites, I, compounds I would have been crowded. I, I understand your point, but what this person is saying is they're going in the right direction. That's a quote off of Reuters here, because the government yeah. was being kept informed and they were not hitting civilians or Syrian military targets. You're saying there yeah. is no cooperation with Damascus here? No, I'm saying we, are, we did let them know we were coming so they wouldn't be stupid and turn their radars on and paint our aircraft. But no, we're not coordinating who and what we strike with Damascus. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, the problem here was that, again, President Obama didn't want to hurt any terrorists, except maybe the Khorasan group. We may have taken out some of them because they seem, seem to be an... Uh, they're pur purported to be an imminent, imminent threat to the homeland. We'll see about that. But the, the real big problem there is the Islamic State and the Caliphate. And Bill... Knocking out windows, knocking down antennas, you know, rearranging the furniture with a cruise missile doesn't deter people who believe they're on a mission from God to kill everything in sight. The only way you can deal with terrorists of this nature is to kill them and keep on killing them, kill them in large numbers, kill them in ones and twos until they are either exterminated or the last guys just give up and run for the, run for the case. Earlier today on the Today Show on NBC,